This is genuine, you know, it's, yeah, it's beyond just selling a product, it's, yeah. you know, creating a better life. Professional dog trainer. What do you What do you do every day? Wake up, come to work. Obviously, you know. Oh wow. Eight, nine, I, I'm start. I'm 20 minutes away, so oh, just that's the start of my day. You know, work, work my dogs, pee poop, potty, potty walks, and then train them. Yeah, go home. Usually go to the gym or just chill. It depends what what kind of day I had. Afterwards, I also I have my dog take him for a walk. I've had eight so far, but I've definitely during training and just in between me training and me actually getting my first very own dog here. Yeah. I have done a lot of like unofficial actual work that's been mostly put into a lot of dogs. I'd say maybe around 18, 20 or in the ballpark. Again, yeah. I, I'd probably have to think about it a little bit longer to think about each and every dog, but yeah. I know definitely at least, I know every single dog personally here, but that's every single trainer. Yeah. But the ones I've actually put an effort to like me individually be considered, you know, a part of their final training. Yeah. I'd say probably around 18, 20. Nice, yeah. okay, good. And throughout that time of like training all those dogs, is there anything in specific that you really like to train the dogs? I think it's really, really satisfying to get a nice heel. Yes! Uh, so just yes. like, after, especially the dogs that come here. Rarely has anyone said. Me personally, because especially when you see them come in, majority of them do not have heel down. Yeah. And majority of them are either on the harness, on the easy walk harness, yeah. and they're pulling, pulling, pulling. I think it's so satisfying when you finally don't need that food learning anymore. You just yeah. say heel, and they're right there. You can yeah. turn around heel. I think that's my yeah. favorite part. Is there anything that you don't like to train? It's not so much as don't like it. I don't like the process sometimes yeah. of teaching a new dog down because if they have no clue what down yes. is because there's so much to figure out yeah. and there's so much because some of them you could just take the food and just lure them down but some yeah. of them you have to capture it some of them you have yeah. to actually just kind of get them between the legs you know yeah. there's so many ways of doing it and i think just because it takes that time sometimes it's like <sighs> yeah, man, you know, I would definitely agree with you as yeah. well. That's definitely a, a challenging one if the dog has never done. It. Yeah, it, it, sometimes they come and they know down. It's like, okay, whatever. Is there any dog breed that when you are assigned a dog that you either help with or is specifically assigned to you that when you see that dog breed, you're like, oh, nice, awesome, cool. I've seen all the pitties I've ever had here just go home so good and they come yeah. back and they're still so good. Because so pitties, they're huh? smart. I, I love pitties, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, I was about to say, but your own dog isn't a pity, but maybe he's no. mixed. No, but also, I grew up with him, love yeah. him to death, but also, especially when I started working with other dogs, yeah. I'm like, there's so many, because he doesn't have any real, like, kind of breed traits, besides, yeah. like, kind of the child laziness. He's so much in one. Yeah. He's, like, his own unique thing. Yeah. Um, but then when I started working with dogs, I'm like, oh, I love the energy of pitties. I love the friendliness of, like, labs, golden retrievers. Yeah. There's so many different things. Very breed um, specific trick. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And that's, me personally, I just find the pitties that come here, I find them so smart and I find yeah. them that there's so, so much potential for them. Yeah. I, I just love working with them and I love seeing how they go nice. home. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure they'll make a lot of people happy saying, yeah. like, oh, Zach is my character. <laughs> okay, so are there any dog breeds that you don't find as much joy working with them? It's gonna sound weird. It's not a breed. I think smaller dogs, just for the reason, because again, I like teaching heel. I love kind of, you know, having that lure. But whenever you lower the small dog, especially like a little chihuahua, you're back, yeah. you're walking like this all the way down yeah. like here. A little annoying. Yeah. But specific breeds, I really haven't encountered like any specific breed where we get them like, Man, yeah. you know, I think it's just maybe the generalization, generalization of just the small dogs and small dogs. how we're gonna yeah. teach them because I gotta bend on all the way every yeah. time. Yeah, mm -hmm. I get it. So switching from the dog training to now like the owner training. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when people think of like a dog trainer, they obviously think about dogs, like mm -hmm. the actual training of the dogs. They're like, oh my gosh, it's so much fun. You just put a puppy there. But a lot of it is actually human education. Mm -hmm. And so is there anything like in this process of not just learning to train dogs, but also learning to train humans as well that has impacted you, Zach, as an individual and has helped you grow as a person through this journey. 
do you feel like you've changed at all or not? Loaded question. Yeah. That's a lot. I think the way that I interact with people has definitely changed in this job in the sense of a lot of what I did beforehand, if I in interacted with anyone that came to work, with any, even, even since I worked in high school, was mostly selling them on something. Okay. And sometimes you'd even have to kind of lie to get there. You'd be yeah. like, oh, you know, this product is better than this or something in the sense when in reality, you know, like, yeah, it's not the full truth, but I really like it here, especially just in training in general, because you have to be honest yeah. and you have to just tell them everything. And you can, you don't have to treat them as like, you know, you're selling this person. You gotta treat them as this dog's doing at home and I want the best life possible for them. Yeah. And I need to tell you everything that I know to help you actually get there and yeah. just maintain that. So I think a lot of like what I actually learned here in terms of just speaking with our clients is just being honest and being, you know, they're real people. They can just yeah. be your friend, you know, just yeah. chill with them, let them know what's going on, yeah. teach them, and they're gonna get it. And then they're gonna go on happy with their dog. The dog's yeah. gonna stay happy as long as they understand. There's yeah. a certain level of like casual, not- Exactly. I mean, you're, you're yeah. still professional with this job. Yeah, of course. But you have to connect with people on a very exactly. genuine level mm -hmm. in order for them. Cause this is genuine, you know, it's, it's beyond just selling a product. It's, yeah. you know, creating a better life. How do you, I mean, I know a lot of people want to work with dogs, but there's mm -hmm. like daycares, there's grooming, yeah. there's vet, there's so many of these different things. So why, how, why dog training? So I started off about a year ago, a year and a half ago-ish. It was about to hit summer. I didn't have a job. And I was with my friend and we're just like scrolling. And we're like, hey, there's a dog daycare. And I knew I liked dogs. I've always owned a dog. I'm like, you know, might as well try it. And so I worked there for about a year. And I, I did enjoy it, but I noticed a big thing that was being put off there was the dog's wellness and health. And you know, same thing, you know, if someone wasn't doing too good there, we couldn't tell them that they weren't doing too good, yeah. you know, because they were coming in and paying us yeah. to bring their dog there. So the wellness was kind of put off to the side, and that was a very, very big portion of me that was like very uncomfortable with that. Yeah. And so I eventually left there and I came here, and I realized that there's just so much effort being put into, again, not just selling it, just making sure these dogs, you know, are happy and good. That's what really makes me happy is just yeah. knowing that I'm actually doing good for these guys and not yeah. just selling a product, just actually being able to make a difference in their lives. Me personally, that's what I really like. This job does have a certain aspect of like, it's very fulfilling. Yeah. Is there yeah. any, I don't, I don't know, maybe you have a, a story, and it doesn't have to be with a client, maybe it's with the dog that you're working with, or maybe even just one of your coworkers, that when you think about this memory, it kind of brings a smile to your face. Do you have like any specific fond memory or funny memory that you could share? I just gotta think that we're like way back to like before I knew any any dogs or any people. I don't think about it first. Oh, yeah, so when I was still new here, there was a, I think he was born at the time, I, don't, I think he's already done training. Big Great Dane, I think it was Diesel. And so I used to be able to just take him out for walks and everything because I was new, I, I was still shattering. But when on my downtime, I would take him for walks, you know, just kind of get the experience in. And one time we were chilling outside, just on the turf, you know, me and him, I was petting him, playing with him. Yeah. And I sat down for a minute, the second I sat down, Big Great Dane, yeah. he's still a puppy, but huge, climbed directly on top of me. It took me a second to actually get up and like actually get out of there. I'm like, dude, come on, man trying to kill me, trying to suffocate me. Do you have a favorite quote or saying that comes to mind that you could share? When you're not feeling the best, your brain is chem chemically engineered to make you, what, like at least like, I forgot what the chemical's called, like dopamine, something like that, yeah. when you smile. And so now because of that, smiling is kind of like my go-to thing, especially in negative situations, which kind, of, which kind of sucks. Like if I'm like stressed out or like kind of like someone's chewing into me, I'm sitting there like, and they're smiling. like, what are you laughing at? I'm like, yeah. It's not me. It's because of that one thing that I heard on the radio a couple yeah. years ago. I obviously don't say that, but I'm like, in my head, I'm like, I know yeah. it's that one thing that I heard because I remember I started right then and there. Yeah. And it works. It's yeah. really cool because even sometimes if I'm just not feeling good, I just sit there and I smile. I'm like, oh. It's the whole premise behind the fake it. And it works. Please.